Good day, Minecrafters, and how you going? Steve O here with another video, and today I want to talk to you guys about uh, motion sensors with uh, command blocks. Uh, these are well, this is something that you can do obviously only in um, map making and creative mode, um, and it's obviously not something you can do in single player. So let me talk about it a little bit. Uh, this what we're basically working with here is the test for command, similar to what we worked with previously but with a radius function. Um, as you notice here, that light there is on. When I move either side, or any side of this, it won't be on. But only on that one point here, it's going to be on. If I get higher than it, it's not on. Now, similarly, we've got a radius function here. If I'm anywhere within this radius, this one's going to be on. Now, the radius function allows us to do quite a number of things. I'm going to be working with radius 2, and this is basically what it looks like. This is an aerial view of a, a radius of 2. Um, basically, fr from the very middle point, um, you go 2 from e uh, in every direction. So you basically end up with a shape, an invisible shape like this, or a detection field like this. This here, uh, actually that layer there being here, not necessarily on the ground. I was just measuring out the outer points. So I've used... Uh, two different orientations of the radius to to use for this motion sensor here. As you can see, as I move across, it will follow me. This can be very useful for a number of things. Um, if you, th Notice there's no spawners or anything like that. Everything you see is right here. Um, and this is my second one. Now, the problem with this first one here is I've used this kind of radius here. This here being that point there. So this is that. So as I move out, I will, for example, from here, this and this and this will all light up on there. So you watch. As you notice, now the next layer, five, and then back to three, then one again. So I've used that form of the radius on this one. It's the same all the way through. I can also get it in midair, as you notice. Three and one. So this here is where I set my radius. I didn't set it back here, I set it here. Now this one here is different. I've set the radius underground, so that top point there is the only thing visible. Now you notice it's also on the screen and here. So this will light up as I walk across. It's a little bit delayed obviously because of re having repeaters and, and comparators and so forth, but as I walk back and forth, it lights up, it turns off, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's basically where this runs from. It's a, a very simple system, and now let me explain to you how uh, how to make it. All right, let's set up a new one, a um, a brand new check for this location here. So let's press F3 to get our coordinates. We're at 497, 56, negative 216. Now something you need to take into account, um, which I'll show you on here, um, is that your Z coordinate uh, needs to be different from what it is here, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So let's do this. Uh, test 4 at P. And now with the coordinates, uh, we had 496. Uh, we can do it like this. We don't have to put in x equals this, y equals this, z equals this. If you do it like this, it's the first things in the, uh, the test 4 square brackets. Um, then you don't need to specify what they are. So actually we'll make Y 54 and you'll see why in a minute. 54 and Z uh, was at negative 2. Now we're doing 217. You'll see why in a minute. With a radius of 2. So that's the first four commas. First one is X, Y, Z and then radius. That's our test 4 command right there. Now we can set up a little bit of a clock with it but um, yeah, we can even set it with a button, doesn't matter. Uh, you can have it repeating on a clock, let's just put it on a clock, just be, just because. Uh, repeater, a comparator. There we go, that'll do. So as we... As we stand here, it should... Not sure what's going on there. Let me try something. We've done something wrong. 
it can be to do with this here. Like I have had issues in the past where um, because it's too long, it doesn't test for it. Let's try that. Now I don't know where my coordinate is. Here it is, right here. <laughs> Must be this one. Yep, this is it. So this is our coordinate right here. <laughs> Bit of a fail on my part. I should have looked at the coordinates. Now, as you notice, um, we've used a different Z coordinate. Uh, I'm not sure why it has to be one off, um, but you need to do some tests with it before you do it. But you need to notice, for example, right now my Z coordinate is two, negative 210. I've got negative 211 as my test for for that one there. Likewise here, 212 for 211, 213 for 212, and so forth. The same is true over here. I don't know why, but for some reason, even here, um, I, the Z coordinate needs to be one next to it. I think that has something to do with the coordinate being from this corner here, but I'm not entirely sure, or from that edge. But I'm not entirely sure why it does it. And likewise, as you saw here, if you were to put the redstone there, uh, too close to it that is, um, you end up with difficulties or problems. Um, that's why, for example, I have these off to the side because I was having the same issues with these middle ones. The middle ones weren't firing regardless. So this can actually be shortened. It should be able to. And it will still work. Yep. Or likewise, doing that should be fine. But not a direct... Yep, that's fine. So it's fa fairly simple to set up, and you can set up pretty cool things with it. Now, one such thing you could do is, for example, a finish line. If you were to do a racing game, and someone crosses the finish line, the redstone sends it out, it might trigger who was the closest player, give them a value, uh, so forth. And you can set, for example, a winner or a trap. Like, this is, this is a motion sensor. You can do whatever you want with it. You could do an undetectable minefield if you really wanted to. Uh, there are so many cool things you can do with it, um, and it's only really limited by your imagination. I've actually got a number of ideas in mind, but just remember the radius. This is what the radius looks like. So it's a cube in the middle, if it's a two radius. A three radius, it's it's spherical, like it doesn't normally look like this, but this is the closest to, to the two radius sphere you can get. Um, <laughs> You don't have round edges in Minecraft, so that's basically how it works with the two radius. So just keep that in, in mind when uh, creating your radius. If a radius of three uh, would be three out from all directions and it'll look a lot more cu uh, curved on its edges um, and so forth. But for things like this where, it's, where you want like one above the surface, I've found the radius of two works the best because you can have a point that sticks out above the ground or whatever direction you want it to be. You could have it from above even, like the radius could uh, go to here sort of thing, like you walking through could trigger it from this level here, from above. There's a lot of different ways you could do it, and um, there's no be all and end all way, uh, but I just wanted to get the concept and idea out there because uh, I'm hoping to help people to understand more about command blocks. I've had a number of people message me with regard to command blocks, and I'm just hoping that people will, I guess, figure out some of the basics from my videos. Anyway, guys, I hope you've gained something from this. I hope you are now empowered in the use of command blocks. If you don't quite understand the test for command, like I said, check out my previous video. Uh, it goes over a lot more of the basics, like um, adding commands and the test fours and the conditionals. So if you're not sure what those mean, go to that video. I'll, like I said, it's linked in the annotations and in the description. Uh, so yeah, anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Steve-O and I'll catch you later. See ya. Got a little Swedish there. Yeah.